All right, so we just finished doing this little Mad Libs assignment here. And uh, what we have are some static verbs that we, we sort of, um, not just verbs, but nouns and adjectives also, parts of speech that we put in as variables or put as, as string val values in these variables uh, that then get added to our text here. And um, that's kind of fun, but uh, we already know the story where the people that are coding this, let's say we wanted to make this a little Mad Libs program where it's more like the traditional Mad Libs where it says, uh, to the user, it says, enter a noun, enter a verb, and they, they respond with those types of words or those parts of speech. And they do that without knowing what the story is going to be. And then it puts those into the story and shows them the final product, uh, which is kind of the way Mad Libs works in regular life here. Um, so it's, it's more fun if you're asking them for the words without them knowing the story. So the way we're going to do that is by using another function. So far we've used the print function. We're going to add another function to our repertoire here. And um, before we jump straight into using that function in the Mad Libs, I want to quickly demo how that function works. So uh, I'm just going to remove that Mad Libs text for a second so that we can demo this function. And so um, previously, we have had a f string that looked something like this, hello, and then str name. And just before that, we have said str name equals something like Bill. And when we run that, of course, it says hello, Bill, because it puts the value of Bill into that spot in the text. And so um, the new function that we're going to, to use is called the input function. And it's a way of asking the user, whoever's using your program, to input something. And then that gets put into a variable. So let's try this out. And instead of the string bill here, I'm going to use the input function. And the input function takes an argument or something that goes in the parentheses is called an argument. It's not like the argument you have with your sister or your spouse, but it is the thing that we put inside the parentheses. It takes a string as an argument. And in the input world, the string that it takes is a prompt for the user. So we're telling the user something about what we want them to enter. So let's say we say, what is your name? And whatever they enter then goes into str name and then gets printed out. So if I run this, it says, what is your name down here? And unlike before where that was just a, uh, a presentation of what the program was doing, I can actually type down here. If I type a bill, and I hit return, it says, hello, Bill, because whatever I typed in response to what is your name goes into that variable container and then gets inserted into the F string. So if I run it again and I say, my name is Dave, then it says, hello, Dave. And so this is really useful because now what we can do is we can, um, use input to gather those parts of speech for our Mad Libs. So I'm going to start out with the Mad Libs program exactly the way it was before. And instead of having these defined in the program, I'm going to replace each one with an input statement that asks the user for something. Okay, so for parts of speech. So I'm going to say input, and I'm going to say enter a noun. Okay, just like that. And for each one, I'm going to put something similar. Input, enter an adjective. 
And of course, for these nouns, I can use the same input for both of those. And for this one, remember it was a it was a verb. Um, since it it says it was blank around, we want a verb that ends in ing. So let's direct the user to that. Enter a verb ending in ing. Now notice if I have double quotes and I want to put something in quotes inside that double quotes as part of my string, I can use single quotes inside that and it won't mess things up. If I use double quotes inside that, then it causes errors because it's ending that string. So we don't want that. I'm just going to put ing here like that. And now I'm going to put another verb, enter a verb. Of course I can copy and paste that one. And then adjective, I can copy and paste also. A lot of copy and paste used when you're putting code together like this. Save yourself a little bit of time. And now I have all of these input statements and all of the responses from the user will go into those variables and be put into the story and then we'll print the story. So let's try it out. So it has enter a noun first. Let's say um, cat. Let's say hi. Enter another noun, uh, ball verb bouncing enter a verb run fly orange okay now you can see here on the adjective ones I forgot my colon and so that's kind of not great because it, it's kind of awkward for the user to put something in there so I want to fix that in just a minute here but let's hit enter on this last one and see how the story looks Yesterday I went to the cat and saw the most high ball. It was bouncing around like it had no care in the world, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so the story worked great. I've got a couple of user interface things that I want to take care of here because this is kind of not great. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a space after each one of these, and I'll show you how that helps with the user interface, and I'm also going to add the colon to those adjective so let's run that again. And now see how it gives a little space in between what the user enters and the, the colon. It just looks a little nicer. It gives the user a, a bit of space. Uh, the danger if you don't have that space there is that the user might press space themselves. And in that case, their space that they type becomes part of their input. And we don't really want that. So uh, that's a nice thing to remember. Um, verb. Okay, so... There we go. There is the finished product and we've got that. So that is a very nice way, a very fun way to create a very simple Mad Libs program and you can do all kinds of things with that.